This is a presentation for alkylipid production for use of fuels and chemicals. Here is some background and motivation. Alkyl biofuels derived from alkyl lipids are a promising solution to decreasing our dependence on fossil fuels. Much research has gone into utilizing these products as biofuels and increasing their photosynthetic efficiency. To compete with fossil fuels, several challenges must be overcome to develop a feasible pathway model for the conversion of algal carbohydrates and lipids into valuable fuel products. Advantages of algal lipid-based fuels include reduced use of freshwater resources by utilizing wastewater, biodegradability reducing environmental impacts, as well as minimal land quality requirements while keeping a high product yield. This project examines production and extraction of lipids from algae as a renewable fuel source. It also developed a model for algal lipid production that utilizes recovered CO2 and recycles excess algae water and nutrients to preserve economic feasibility. The most prominent market for algal lipids is the biofuel industry. Current fossil fuel competitors pose great environmental concerns. Algae, a renewable fuel source, is a great alternative in the biofuel market due to its high lipid oil concentration and sustainable production. Jet fuels are projected to be the targeted fuel market due to the current petroleum-based fuels major contribution to greenhouse gas emissions. Algae will reduce these carbon emissions and utilize waste of CO2 supply. Top lipid competitors include palm oil, soybean oil, and rapeseed oil. Compared to its crop-based biofuels and lipid competitors, Algae will not have to worry about competing with the food and beverage market because of the algae's larger production rate and better environmental impact. Animal feed is also a highly considered market for algae's cheap and renewable feed source with a high micronutrient and protein concentration. Near 27% of oil's global volume has gone to the animal feed market. Various methods and tools were used in this modeling process. Aspen Plus V11 was used to model and simulate the production and dewatering stages of the algal lipid model. Aspen Plus was also used to model the lipid extraction stage of the process and calculate capital and operating costs as well as energy requirements. OpenLCA was used to produce an environmental impact report of our process. Dunlop et al.'s an energy limited model of algal biofuel production toward the next generation of advanced biofuels paper was used to help model the algal biodiesel aspen model. NREL's design report was used to model the dewatering process in aspen, and NREL's Excel algae farm model aided in the sizing of our process and was used to compare process design and material balances. The Aspen model was created with the ENRTL-RK method. This method used a mix of the electrolyte NRTL liquid phase activity coefficient method with the right liquid vapor phase fugacity coefficient method. Then the following components were added in. Carbon dioxide, nitrogen, and oxygen were assumed to be Henry's law gases. Algae was created as a component by listing its stoichiometry as aspen does not currently include a component known as algae. It was assumed to be a solid. Additionally, this was taken as the elemental stoichiometry of Cenetis species of algae. Urea was taken as the nitrogen source of the growing algae. Elemental stoichiometry of algae, as well as urea being the source of nitrogen, was taken from Dunlop et al.'s paper, an energy limited model of bio algae biofuel production towards the next generation of advanced biofuels. The following equilibrium chemistry was included in the model. Wherever Aspen saw any of these components, it could assume that these reactions were occurring in equilibrium. The first reaction being a decomposition reaction of bicarbonate, the second water dissociating into an acid and base depending on the pH, and the third the forming of bicarbonate. This third reaction was the most important, as bicarbonate would later be found to be the limiting reaction in algae growth and the form of CO2 that the algae uptook. The two reactions seen on this slide represent both stages of the algae production seen in the Aspen model, the growth stage and the accumulation of lipid stage, respectively. 
In the growth stage in PBR1, bicarbonate, water, and urea are used to grow algae along with the byproducts of oxygen and hydroxide. In the growth stage, the initial inoculum of algae of the species Sinaitis acutis is introduced into the reactor and by being fed a carbon dioxide source, a source of water and a nitrogen source is able to pro proliferate. Then in the accumulation of lipid stage with re reactor PBR2, urea is taken away, essentially starving the algae of nitrogen. This triggers the algae to accumulate oils known as tags and represented as a single lipid known as triolene or OC35. The same byproducts are present in the second reaction as in the first. The assumptions made when formulating the Aspen model are as follows. Urea was initially assumed to be the limiting reactant and so was entered into Aspen with the assumption that 100% would be converted. However, when the model was run, it was found that only about 50% was actually converted. This indicated that initially too much urea was loaded into the reactor. Instead of reducing the amount of urea initially charged, as this would throw off the balance of the reactions, bicarbonate was then decided on as the limiting reactant. Therefore, the model was driven by how fast bicarbonate could be formed so to be used uh, by the algae. Bicarbonate, as mentioned previously, was the form of carbon dioxide that the algae was able to consume. The first assumption was that the model ignored the availability of sunlight in this algae biodiesel aspen model. Instead, it was assumed that enough sunlight was provided to drive the conversion of bicarbonate into cellular material and grow. It was also assumed that the CO2 equilibrium chemistry, shown on the previous slide, would occur everywhere these components were seen and would occur at equilibrium conditions. Although algae do produce a wide variety of oils, some known as tags or triacylglycerols, one simple representation of tag known as triolene was chosen. Tags are the oils that are extracted and used for biodiesel. Triolene is known to form methyl oleate by triesterification. Finally, it was assumed that sulfur and phosphorus were so negligible that they would be eliminated from the algae empirical formula. In Figure 1, it can be seen that the Aspen model was split into hierarchy blocks, one for the production of the algae and one for dewatering. Additionally, a recycled stream was used to supply water to the production stage, as to cut down on the requirement of water as this was a very large requirement for algal growth. After the dewatering stage, the algal solids are to be fed to an extraction and recovery stage that would recover the triolene for biodiesel use. However, this block has not yet been built. Here in Figure 2 is the A100 hierarchy block or the production part of the process. Production is split into two stages, the growth stage and the accumulation of oils or lipid stage. Each of the two stages are sub subsequently split into three processes. CO2 is absorbed into water with the absorber seen in the upper right corner of each stage as CO2 ABS1 and CO2 ABS2. Then this now bicarbonate is fed into the growth reactor seen as PBR101 or the lipid accumulation reactor seen as PBR02. In the second process, the necessary reactants are fed into each reactor and based on the reactor, algae is grown or triolene is accumulated. Finally, those products are sent to a flask distillation unit where residual aqueous CO2 in the product stream is released into the atmosphere known as the off-gas stream. A settling pond is included at the end of lipid accumulation stage. The high lipid algae is fed into the settling pond and the bulk of water is removed and recycled back to the ponds. This recycle stream is seen in figure 2 as S109. Five different alkyl strains were considered as the model strain for use in the alkyl lipid extraction process. So Desmus acutus was finally landed on for both of its combination of high lipid content and high specific growth rate and because it was able to grow well on wastewater. The decision of Sedesmus was also based off the NREL design report. For the production process, three types of reactor systems were considered. 
Open Raceway Ponds are a popular choice because of their lower cost, high surface area to sunlight ratio, and ability to be scaled up to size with ease. However, they also come with disadvantages. Namely, like all open ponds, they are easily contaminated with other microorganisms competed with the algae for nutrients. Open raceway ponds are typically only functional at the top two or three inches of water as sunlight is blocked from reaching the lower layers. This, of course, could be remedied by adding some sort of impeller into the ponds. Additionally, raceway ponds require a larger footprint than to closed photobioreactors. Finally, they are noted for having high evaporation rates, which is concerning for a process requiring so much water. High photobio closed photobioreactors were also considered as with all closed systems. They are less impervious to contamination and growing conditions such as temperature, sunlight, and nutrient supply, which can be tightly regulated. However, like raceway ponds, they present disadvantages. Firstly, they are much more expensive than an open raceway pond, costing, costing as much as 10 times of that pond. Then photobioreactors require much more maintenance to keep them to keep all the systems running. With more maintenance comes more workers. So the reactors require a more constant clock supervision for a large team of engineers. Hybrid systems represent the, both, the best of both worlds of these two reactors and so were ultimately chosen as the method of algae production. In a hybrid system, algae is first inoculated in a closed photobioreactor and then fed into the open raceway pond where it is allowed to proliferate and accumulate lipids. An advantage to this decision is that feeding an, an inoculum of the desired species of algae into the raceway ponds reduces the risk of other algae species competing for resources as this species already has a competitive advantage in numbers. This process model was based off the NREL design of the algae production process and has proved competitive in many current algae growth facilities. Of note is that this Aspen model does not currently assume one type of reactor over the other, but instead could be used for modeling either closed photobioreactors or open raceway ponds. In order to prepare the algae for lipid extraction, the algae must be harvested and then further dewatered. Harvesting is a method of separating the algae biomass from the growing solution. Additionally, dewatering is the removal of the remaining traces of water, creating a sort of algae paste. A few harvesting methods were considered, but sedimentation gave the desired end result. Sedimentation allows the algae to settle over time due to gravity. This method is common. Sedimentation is considered a relatively inexpensive model. However, without flocculation to assist, it is not a very reliable harvesting process. Together, these methods make for an inexpensive and reliable algae primary harvesting method. Again, for the dewatering step, several methods were considered. Ultimately, centrifugation was found to be most effective and the fastest. Best results are shown when combined with filtration. Centrifugation is the application of centrifugal force to promote settling out of particles in a mixture. This method is an extension of gravitational sedimentation. This method is highly reliable and efficient, however, it does require high operational cost. An, Im an imperforate basket centrifuge and decanter are suggested centrifuge technologies that can be further assisted by flocculants. After assessing the overall advantages and disadvantages of the primary and secondary techniques shown above, Flocculation allows for the chemical flocculant to create large algal flocks, which will eventually settle to the bottom of the container. Further, by increasing the gravity force, sedimentation rate will increase, allowing the flock to float. This will allow the algal flocks to become more attainable by the secondary method of centrifugation. While we chose the sedimentation for the primary technique for harvesting the algae, the Aspen Plus model resembles that of the NREL report. Figure 3 above is the NREL Aspen design model based on a cross-flow filtration step, then followed by centrifugation. They gave specific bases for performance of these units in terms of the starting and final algal biomass concentration and separation efficiencies. So in Aspen, these are modeled as simple substream splitters. This model took on a few assumptions. 
the first being that the settling ponds required the majority of the inlet mass. The second assumed that the system was not 100% efficient. Overall, the system comprised of the settling ponds, membrane, and centrifuge resulted in a 86.9% separation efficiency. The third assumption was that the settling ponds required no energy input, while the majority of the energy demand came from the centrifuge at about 1.35 kilowatt hours per meter cubed. Lipid extraction is an essential step of downstream processing for biofuel production. Solvent extraction uses nonpolar and polar solvents to extract the lipids from any remaining side products. Considerations for this process included supercritical CO2 extraction, the Fulch method chloroform methanol extraction, and Podbleniac system using hexane methanol solvent. The Podbleniac system using hexane and methane was chosen due to the solvent's high efficiency for lipids and low cost. An advantage of the pod system is its ability to perform liquid-liquid centrifugal extraction and separation, providing the most efficient extraction process. The removal of the hexane-based solvent through reduced pressure in a rotary evaporator was found to be technically and economically advantageous compared to other considered methods. Figure 4 depicts an illustration of the actual facility used for algae growth in lipid extraction. This figure was taken from Enrol's design report and will be used to calculate sizing and energy requirements for the facility in the economic analysis portion of our report. To get an understanding for the vast size of this facility, Enrol chose a facility with 50 100-acre modules. Each module has 10 10-acre 10 raceway ponds. These ponds will be used for algal growth and accumulation of lipids. The inoculum fed into each pond will come from the inoculum pond section of the facility down at the bottom. Next, the high lipid algae will be fed into the dewatering facility at the bottom for the next stage of the process. Finally, all lipid extraction and processing will occur at the bottom right corner of the facility titled the algal biomass conversion operations footprint. This is an example of what a facility might look like and how it might be sized. Currently, our senior design project is still underway and we have a few steps of the project left to go. In terms of the Aspen model, a third block will need to be added that will demonstrate the extraction steps used for lipid extraction and recovery. Next in the model, we will need to include the energy costs required for pumping the algae and nutrients between ponds and reactors as this is sizable. Finally, we will need to size the reactors based on the amount of sunlight needed and available flux of radiation in a given location. This work will be largely based on NREL's facility layout depicted in the last slide. In terms of the economic analysis, calculations will need to be made to size the ponds and reactors now in terms of the meeting the needs of production. Next, capital costs will need to be determined, which will consist mostly of pricing the reactors and big pieces of equipment. Finally, operating costs will be calculated based on labor, utilities, and raw materials, such as delivered CO2, urea, and water. An environmental analysis will be used to determine the overall environmental impact and contributions to this process. Finally, an energy analysis will be necessary to answer the overall question of the report. Is producing lipids from algae an energy positive return as well as a return on investment? To do this, Energy requirements of the whole process will be compared to the energy from the lipid pr produce, and we will know whether the impact is in fact greater than the output. If it isn't, reformulating the Aspen model or resizing the facility will both be options.